Hi, everybody, and welcome again to the Pranic World Festival. Here we are on the second interview of our third day. And I'm very honored to introduce you to a very special Vin, very, very dear to my heart. I really enjoy every time he's with us and share his experiences and life journeys. We have with us Kirby from Sri Lanka, and I pass you the mic. Hi, Kirby. How are you? How are you, Naida? It's a pleasure to be here again. Thank you. My pleasure. As, uh, as you know, you will now have uh, half an hour to share whatever your heart feels to share with the audience now. And then sure. uh, I will be back and we go for question and answer. Okay, let's do that. Um, so once again, I just want to thank uh, everyone who's organized the Pranic Festival and the Breatharian Festival once again this year. Uh, Nicholas, my friend, uh, I know you're watching and I want to thank you uh, for uh, really organizing this uh, during a time of the pandemic and during very, very tough, uh, a tough season. Uh, you're organizing this and you're bringing meaning uh, to many, many things at a, a season where people are looking for meaning. So I want to thank all the organizers of the uh, Pranic Festival uh, for doing it, especially at this time, you know, where everyone is wanting uh, to learn more, uh, to see how their immunity can be boosted. Uh, this uh, festival, uh, has been, uh, you, you have had it for nearly three, four years. I've been on it maybe... Uh, for three years or four years, and uh, it's um, it's really now I think uh, very very important for people to hear this type of lifestyle and the energy uh, that can be uh, harnessed uh, from the ether, from the subtle energies uh, that will keep us alive longer and stronger and give us a stronger immunity. So. In saying that, I just want to uh, give a brief to anyone who's listening to me uh, of who I am and my journey, where I am today, where I started, uh, and um, hopefully my sharing will help someone along the way uh, to take the next steps into their evolution. Uh, so uh, if you're listening to me, um, I want you to know I'm from Sri Lanka. I'm talking to you from Colombo. And uh, my journey started maybe, uh, maybe 15 years ago. I'm 47 now. And um, it started 15 years ago when I was looking for uh, the divine. I was looking for God. And I was uh, in Sri Lanka doing business, a businessman, uh, but I wanted something deeper. And so I went to my faith. My grandfather was uh, a priest, a Methodist priest in Sri Lanka. And in Sri Lanka, we have very deep uh, Christian roots, Buddhist country, but very deep Christian roots. Uh, for instance, uh, Sri Lanka has Christian roots that are over 1,800 years old. And it's called Nestorian Christianity which is a deep mystical Christianity that started before the uh, Roman Catholic Church was really formed. So it's called Nestorian Christianity. And so this type of Christianity came into um, Sri Lanka 1,800 years ago. And uh, my uh, religion or my search is to search that original version of Christianity. And in that version of Christianity, uh, we have uh, a lot of knowledge to do with the elements, to do with consciousness, and to do with fasting. Um, so this is uh, what we call living on light. And some of you are familiar with that term. So when I started looking for my deeper search in my Christian roots, what happened was I started fasting. And uh, for about six months of the year, I was fasting. And in six months of the year, 
uh, I was feasting. And this went up and down, up and down, till suddenly I could um, fast uh, for longer periods of time. And I realized that I was getting the energy from somewhere else. And so Jesus has a very famous saying. He says, man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word. And the word there is logos, which is revelation, mind, but every bit of mind of God. And uh, so that is uh, when I went deeper into my faith, understood certain doctrines, and then I heard in my faith that there were people who lived on communion, only meditating on the, the communion or what you might call the holy sacrament, but not in the way that the Catholic church or the mainstream churches are doing now, not that way. But there was deep meditations that can be done on love. And once you do that, the ego dies. And when the ego dies, there is a resurrection power. The spirit rises. And this spirit is what you might call prana or chi or something like that. But in every man is the spirit. But the spirit cannot rise because of the ego. And so meditating on the communion means that the communion represents the cross of Jesus. The communion represents Jesus on a cross. Now that means I am also on the cross. It means it doesn't mean only he is on the cross. It means that the ego man, the natural man, the man who eats, drinks, gets sick, uh, who wants to do things in the natural life, dies on the cross. And so the early Christians understood the communion and the cross very differently to what today's mainstream Christianity uh, believes the cross to be. And so when I meditate on the cross, I found that I could lay down my ego because the cross and the communion meant that I am dying and I am letting go of my will, my thoughts, my desires, and everything that I need. And that is only so that the spirit in me can be raised from the dead. And that is what we call uh, the resurrection power of life in this faith, but you might call it the chi rising, someone might call it the kundalini rising, someone might call it uh, the prana coming forth. We can have different names for that. Okay, so that is how I started uh, really understanding uh, how I can tap into the zero point energy. And so uh, that was my first experiences with tapping into the energy of the void. So that is what it's called. What someone would call zero point is what I would call the void, okay, the stillness. Uh, the Bible starts with this one statement. Uh, it says that God made heaven and earth. And the earth is without form and void. It means everything that you can see in the natural, whether it is food, whether it is uh, something that you can hold and touch, inside that, it says that it is void. Void means that it is in finite potential. There is no thing that everything is residing in, which we call the ether. And so uh, why I started doing uh, my meditation and tapping into the ether energy or the expanse energy uh, was because what we can see with our eyes, what we can feel with our hands, 
what we can hear with our ears is only sometimes they say scientists say one percent what our nervous system can apprehend is 99 percent that we cannot see and so i did not start fasting or reducing my food because i was looking to reduce my food i started reducing my food because i wanted to tap into that 99 percent and harness that energy for different reasons. And one of those reasons is healing, miracles, what we call uh, signs and wonders, you know, crazy stuff happening in that 99%. So for me, I'm a bit of a mystic in that sense. I like to uh, know what is in that 99% and be able to harness it. So how I tune myself, how, do, how I prime my nervous system to tap into the 99% that I cannot touch, cannot see, cannot hear, how I tune myself was by cutting down on my food. And that is how the Bible says to do it. And that was one way, it is one way to do it. And so when I started, I went maybe one year uh, and in one year, I ate maybe seven times for that one year. And uh, then after that one year, I started consuming again, maybe about 300 calories, maybe just a juice a day for maybe another one, two years. And after that, I uh, started eating, consuming about 600 calories uh, for the last so many years, except for the last four months. I want to put on some muscle. So I'm now um, uh, maybe eating 1,000, 1,200 calories for the last four months so that I can put on some muscle. And so that is where I am. That is my journey, where I have been. Uh, and um, uh, however, uh, because of my past and because I had learned to fine tune myself to zero point, to the ether, to the 99% uh, of what you can see, my sensitivity has improved and this might help someone who is looking uh, to sensitize themselves to the 99 percent of what we call spirit energy or chi or prana there's so many things you can do with it uh, the idea for me was not to stop eating but to harness that energy so i go around the world now all over the world demonstrating to people how to harness that energy and i do uh, crazy things like uh, uh, like healing uh, people using that energy that spirit energy uh, you know uh, sometimes putting my hand on fire and fire is not burning uh, bending spoons picking up things you know crazy stuff like this because for me uh, i'm looking at that zero point energy that you're tapping into is also good for food and it can energize your body but it can also be directed that energy can also be directed for something else and that is what i am really interested in once you can tune yourself to zero point and you have um, harnessed it and you use that energy to nourish your body, there is so much more that you can do there. And that is what really interests me. Uh, what you can do with now that energy that you harness. And so many people, like uh, many people in this conference, are using that energy to harness, uh, to, to nourish the body and to bring life to your body. Um, and that's great. Uh, but also, I want to tell you guys that uh, there is more that can be done. And uh, sometimes uh, I give demonstrations. If you go to my uh, Facebook page, you'll see that I'm going around the world and I'm demonstrating that with this energy, the zero point energy, once you're primed to it, once your nervous system is tuned to it, you can take it and you can do certain things. And uh, on my Facebook page now, you, if you go and see, you'll see that I'm charging phone batteries in crowds, 
you know, uh, using the energy to do digital uh, changes, changing the digital frequencies. So this is what I'm really, really interested in. I know it's uh, a bit different to uh, many of uh, uh, how people use the prana and use the energy. I also uh, studied uh, Qigong and uh, I understand how to uh, manipulate the chi uh, in certain ways. And so that too has really helped me uh, do these uh, uh, crazy uh, things. Uh, but uh, they're very small things. They're not big things. But in these small things, for me, it is an operation. It is an experiment um, uh, of how you can take this energy and use it for different uh, uh, areas in your life. If the ego is, if ego is simple, you know, if ego is uh, being able, if you can stop ego for one moment in those gaps of when ego is uh, subdued, you, you have a rise of the energy. You have a rise of uh, the spirit power. And then it can be directed, that spirit power can be directed through consciousness and through intention. And uh, that's what really excites me. Uh, very interestingly, I must tell you that the Christian name for God is the name people don't use the name much but i will let you know the name people don't use the name because the old jewish people uh, thought the name was holy uh, and that's okay i i do i think so as well but they did not use it but the name of god in the hebrew bible is yod he wow he uh, that me that that literally means breath. It literally means breath. Yod, he, wow, he. And uh, how they, uh, no one pronounced the name because you were supposed to breathe it and not speak it. So it was like yod, he, wow. And that's the sound of the name. And so the priest used to practice controlled breath. And through the breath, they used to incarnate and take the power of the spirit into their body. And that is how the Hebraic uh, uh, Kabbalistic uh, understanding, how they brought in miracles and stuff like that, was through the breath. And through the breath, they understood that they can take on certain virtues, certain powers, certain spirits can come into them through the breath. And I think uh, uh, that is so uh, apt and so uh, right because it is through the breath even today with coronavirus, you will realize that we can get a virus through the breath. So you, you see the same way even the power and the authority of different spiritual entities can be taken to the, through the breath and then also released through the word and through the breath. I think uh, I have spoken enough now. I have given you a background to what I like, what I'm doing, where I am, and I am open to questions because that is where we can really talk and understand a little more if you would like to. Thank you so much. Yes, I now encourage the, the audience online and at the venue of the festival to ask questions so that Kirby can share with us. There is a question coming, just a second. Okay. So one of the question is um, 
how is your breatharian lifestyle received by your culture and community and yes that is a community mainly yes uh, thank you for asking that question it's been a tough uh, road uh, with the uh, uh, normal christian uh, community because uh, they uh, do not understand a lot of the teachings of jesus uh, unfortunately the mainstream church or the mainline church doesn't uh, know the deep teachings but uh, the community that i am from uh, which is uh, the mystical christian community it's called the mystical christian community completely accepts it and so under me we have 600 churches uh, in sri lanka and i have maybe another uh, 100 uh, units or so all around the world and so in that in those circles it is accepted but not in the mainline churches and it was a it was a tough walk uh, uphill for me uh, many for these years Thank you so much. Um, another question is, how do you minimize your ego? Yes. So interestingly, in, in my uh, heritage and my culture, uh, start, we don't try to attain uh, a consciousness. Uh, we start, uh, so the difference between uh, other philosophies and the Nestorian Christian philosophy is that we are not trying to attain a consciousness as we say yes to christ to jesus it means that we have to die on the cross so we start with uh, our death so saying yes to jesus means in our uh, in the mystical christian community uh, that we must die and so that process, it is a process uh, in saying yes. And so we have, we let go of uh, the things that we like, food being one part of it. Uh, but it is not for long. It is only as an initiation. The initiation means that we must die to our businesses, die to our money, die to uh, uh, what we like, die to sweets, die to TV, die to all this. So that means I go and I hang on the cross with Jesus. I am dead. It is from there, when you do that in our faith, something shifts and something happens and some, you can feel it and something changes and, the, and the, the parts of the ego die and the power of resurrection or the spirit rises. And this is uh, the first initiation. And so um, that the death of the ego start, you start with that. And of course, then later on, if you have done well, and if you have now died to money, and how you die to money is that you give away all your money. You know, we gave Fiona, my wife and I gave away like all our money, our businesses, there's everything, you know, when we first started, uh, our wedding rings, everything, you know, uh, and that's how you die to money. And so for about four or five years, we, uh, everything, every time we get money, we give everything away. And we stayed like that for a long time. And I come from a, um, uh, a family that has money. Uh, and so um, we, uh, and people around us were thinking we're crazy. We're giving everything away. They come to our house, they see uh, our of a couch and there is holes on our couch you know we're not painting our house nothing we're giving away uh, that is to die into wealth the same way we die to uh, we die to our food and we eat we don't eat nice food or something like that so this death of it first after the death of it then when we've done well and everyone knows that we have gone through the process we can enjoy the money and now i have nice house nice car you know a lot of money my i have my own companies uh, which is my inheritance but i i although i'm a priest i still have my companies and i run them uh, so i it was given back to me but i was ready to let it go 
And that's the beginning of the ego death. The ego death is not so that you are not like the other tradition where you completely let go so that you are on a mountain somewhere meditating. That is not it. You let go so that you have now know what it is to engage with God and you are tuned in. So now, although I have nice car, nice house, powerful leader, have churches, all this, have businesses, I can let it go like this without any problem. And that's a matter of my heart because I've done it before. The same with you, with your food. When you're letting go of your food, ego is dying. The ego man who is clinging and clutching and craving He's wanting to eat. You see, when you have spent one, two years letting it go, you know, spending time really saying no to your desire, that part of your ego dies. And um, that is the best way to do it. You know? And then later on, you can come back and you can have those things to eat, but it won't be like before. It won't be a craving. It won't be a clutching. You can enjoy it but you can let it go anytime again. I'm sure a lot of you have experienced that. So the same way with power, if I have a gift to heal, uh, a gift to do a miracle, I let go of the gift completely. And for one, two years, I don't touch the gift. I don't work with the gift. I don't use the gift. You know, Jesus was asked to turn the rocks uh, into bread. It was a gift, but he did not do it, although he could. So he did not use the gift. So like that, I will every time I get something and I get powerful, then we have to die again. If we, we check our heart constantly, is this area of my life, if my ego come up again in this area, and if ego has come up, then we die again. So if I think now food again has caught me and I'm being pulled by certain types of food again, then again, I might go uh, breatharian again for a long time. Uh, but so far, I feel I have authority and I'm in a good place now. I think, I think, I don't know. We have to see. <laughs> Thank you again. Everything is so interesting. Thanks so much for your sharing. Uh, we have another question. It's about love and emotions. So love and emotion in a relationship when we are on a pranic living. Do they still exist or are they neutral? And yes. how can we see them? Yeah. Uh, so the, in, the, in your meditation time, uh, in, my, in my practice, in my meditation time, uh, emotion is a part of uh, emotion. You can have emotion, but not as a reaction. Emotion has to come by a choice. So in my meditation practice, we uh, spend time in the void, in the ether. And so we go back into the cross uh, the bible says it like this it says take every thought captive to the cross so that is every thought so we have six thousand thoughts per day and the bible is saying to take every thought not 50 percent not 95 percent every thought so we have a meditation that captures the thoughts and then takes and kills the thoughts. So uh, this we practice every single day. Uh, the emotion will follow a thought. And so because of that, uh, I don't recommend when you are doing this practice, uh, breatharian or pranic or whatever you want to call it, it is a meditation. And what you're doing is not really cutting down on your food. That is one small part. What you're doing is letting go of the layers of the ego and you are being alchemized and you are being refined. So uh, uh, what is happening if you are in this uh, 
uh, conference, the pranic conference, one part of what you're doing is letting go of the thinking, the concepts, and then you'll also let go of the emotions. And that is good because those emotions were from all patterns. And so once you have learned to let it go, then you can take emotions, new emotions, but not out of the old paradigm. New emotions with new paradigms, not as reactions, but as choice. I hope that helped. Yes, thank you so much. Another question related with what you were sharing before. You said that you recently uh, changed uh, the intake of calories because you wanted to build mus muscle. Mm -hmm. um, but according with sharing of other pranic beans, it's not really what you put in your body as a solid food that help creating muscle. So yeah. how to deal with this topic? Is it yeah. the food or is it the prana? No, it's, and yes, what's but you your must, experience? Uh, well, yes, I, I, I agree with you. Uh, I believe consciousness can build the muscle. Uh, my wife and I are taking part in uh, Ironman. Uh, so when I started uh, uh, running marathon, I was doing duathlon. And so I was, uh, I was breatharian, eating maybe once a month or something like that, and then training for marathon. So I have experience in getting energy from uh, the zero point, from the void. So that was good. Uh, and I've enjoyed the energy. But uh, now my wife is going, she's doing, she's, uh, she's not uh, breatharian, which maybe she has 1,500 calories a day or something like that. Uh, but she uh, is training hard. And so I have to now keep up with her. And uh, the, uh, the training is quite extensive. And so I needed to put some muscle on fast uh, to, get my, uh, to get my score on my running and my uh, uh, certain exercises. So I used something, uh, not exactly calories, but creatine. Uh, so the creatine is what puts on the muscle. And that is, uh, uh, it is my choice uh, because I need to do it fast. Uh, I don't want to take steroids. <laughs> I'd rather have creatine. So that is why I'm saying. Thank you again. Um, I open the, the space for one more question. Yes, sure. Let me translate it because it's in Italian. One second. Um, so uh, this person started to uh, lighten up the diet from eating meat to be vegan, uh, vegetarian, vegan, and now starting with fruit. And actually she's feeling good, but at the same time, she's noticing that she's attracting many people uh, that are uh, doubting or putting uh, negative uh, influence on, on the diet choices she's doing. Yeah. Um, so this creates also doubt in a, her own journey and her own choices. Um, yeah. Do you have any advice in this situation? Yeah. How can she keep going and trust the inner voice, let's say, or maybe yes. avoiding certain kind of energy to get into her yes. field? Yes. When I started um, my journey of uh, uh, calorie restricting and uh, bringing down and becoming lighter and lighter uh, and, and eating only light food, so that's a part of the process. You eat vegetables, fruits, and then you become fruitarian, and you're eating only light, L-I-G-H-T, light food. Uh, that's, a, that's a really nice place to be. I remember the time I was like that. That was great. Um, and, um, but uh, here's something that is important to understand. At that point of time in my life, I also lost a friend of mine who was not well. And uh, at that time, 
my um, mood and my uh, emotions uh, got swayed and I was down and feeling sorrowful. So I'm answering the question, when there is negativity around you, your emotions shift. And um, what I understand is that these emotions of joy, of peace, uh, they are fruit. Actually, the Bible calls it the fruit of the spirit. And the body really lives off joy, peace. Those, those fruits are so important. Uh, patience, kindness, affection. When those fruits are there, this tree is nourished. The tree is a closed circuit system. The fruit falls to the ground and nourishes the tree. The fruit falls to the ground and nourishes the tree. So if you don't have joy and peace, and when my a problem happened, and when I lost the friend, I didn't have the fruit of the spirit, no joy and no peace. And then uh, I didn't push it because my mood was low. Because if you push it now and your mood is not right, you don't have the energy to harness. Uh, the spirit works on uh, the fruit. So then I, I don't push anything. I just go slow till my season changes and I'll go back a bit to eating, but not so much because you already now you're eating fruit. You already changed a lot of your nervous system. It's already very tuned. So you can just go back and don't rush it. Wait till that negativity. There'll be a season where they will leave you alone. Trust me. Okay. It might not be now. It might be your mother, your father, your people around you. They don't understand. And, but there, it won't be every day. There will be a season where it will pass. And I realized I didn't do any process. It took me years. And so uh, for me, I prefer the organic. You do it organically. You know, when the season is right, it's going to happen. And just be very patient. Being patient is a part of the process. So if the, the environment is not right right now, don't force it, just wait patiently. Your inner voice will take you to the right season. Thank you so much. I really consider this message very important. Yeah. And the last question that seems to be one of the most asked questions so far at the festival is about your sleep. How is yeah. your sleep? How many hours do you sleep? Yes. So initially, uh, you'll realize that you don't sleep so much. And if you're in a process, you'll realize that sleep, uh, you don't sleep. And really, you have a lot of energy. So <laughs> you don't need sleep. Yeah. And you realize that you, the sleep is used a lot when the body is repairing and when you're metabolizing and catabolizing the food. Um, but, uh, but you real, and you'll realize that you wake up bright and no, nothing in your eyes. And, you know, it's just amazing. Uh, but, um, what happens is that, uh, later on, as you keep going down this journey, this journey is not a one-time, uh, event. It doesn't happen. Oh, now I'm vegetarian. Oh, I'm pranic. I'm now living on life. You know, it is not that this is life, you know? You see, that is why I'm telling you really my story. I'm not telling you, oh, I'm pranic now and I'm eating only light now. No, I'm eating now. I'm eating food now, you know. And one time I was not eating anything, you know. Uh, but now I'm eating. And this, is, this season will come and it will go for some people. You know, some people um, can stay away from... I, I have to deal with um, 600 churches and thousands of people. And uh, they have all, they all come with their problems. And so sometimes you can't always try and sustain that type of atmosphere. And uh, so it is a journey for me. It is a, uh, it really is a journey. And uh, I'm, my submission to anyone is it's a process. Don't consider it a one-time event. Trust me. You'll go in and out and change, and that's completely okay because we live according to our conscience. I hope that helped. I don't know whether I answered that. 
Thank you so much. I'm sure it really helps. And yeah, this was the last question. Yes. I'm very Thank grateful you. for your presence and, and your sharing. Uh, I would like actually to, to tell to our audience how they can contact you or how they can find you. Yes. Do, do we uh, have to come my... to Sri Lanka or? <laughs> no, no, you can, you can get me on way. my... No, thank, thank you, Naida. We would love to see you in Sri Lanka at any point of time when travel restrictions are allowed again. But uh, until then, you can be in touch with me. I'm on the Kirby Delanerol Facebook page and the Kirby Delanerol. Um, it's the Instagram page. You can find me there and I will respond. Please tell me that you were in the conference and I will try my best to talk to you. Thank you so much. I'm really looking forward to see you Sinaida. again, maybe at God the festival you, next year. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you very much. God bless you. Thank you.